could hear my father's voice He would tell me to move on He would say I'll be just fine Yeah, he would tell me we have time Time to laugh and time to heal Our favorite song is on repeat Drinking wine until the dawn Knowing soon we'll be back home Ooh. Hello folks, welcome along to the vlog. We're in the workshop this morning. Uh, not doing any brewing, of course. Not doing any uh, anything beer related, really. What I'm actually doing is painting pieces of plywood for Abigail's desk that she wants in her bedroom. So that's something I've been getting on with. We went across this morning, as you can tell from that little intro there. We went to B&Q in Doncaster. Uh, I went all gloved up and everything. <laughs> it was crazy. There were people queuing to get into B&Q, so obviously everybody's idea is, oh, it's a holiday, let's do some decorating. And, you know, it's not a holiday, but I can't blame them for keeping themselves busy, otherwise we're going to go absolutely crazy, aren't we? Which is why I'm in here today. Um, but yeah, it was very odd seeing people queuing to get in. I know that B&Q at the moment, which is like Home Depot if you're not in the UK or the States, perhaps. People were queuing to get in, but it didn't look like they were observing social distancing recommendations and that kind of stuff. Thankfully, we have a trade card, and of course there are some businesses, particularly the self-employed, which are going to get really hit really hard uh, over the, well, the onslaught of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the trade counter's still open, thankfully, so... All the builders can get in there, all the joiners can get in there and pick up any supplies that they need. And of course we've got a trade card as well because we do manufacture a lot of stuff in-house. So we got in straight away, picked up a trolley, put my vinyl gloves on, went and got some plywood. And that plywood is to build this furniture over the following, the next few days. Um, but... As it stands today, I'm not going to be doing any work in the workshop at the moment. It's only approaching 2 o'clock, but we do have things that we need to do at home. I've got some design work to do on uh, on SketchUp. So I've got to do a CAD drawer in there to finish a cutting list for Dominic's desk. And Abigail's desk is cut, but it needs painting. So I've just painted everything this morning with a roller. I'm going to have to wait for it to dry before I can put the next coat on. So we're going to grab the camera. Like I say, there's not a lot to do in here. Uh, I'll just g give you a little bit of a walk round. There's stuff put to bed. We do have some beer in tanks that's fermenting away. Whether we're going to be able to sell this or not is a different thing altogether. So we've got some best bitter and some vacant and some proof of concept. Um, I've been told by the police actually that uh, we're not allowed to do off sales I don't see why we can't uh, but Stuart had a phone call with them this morning and uh, the licensing department and they've recommended that we don't do anything like that so that means I'm going to halt production completely in here and uh, effectively lay myself off as a brewer if I do come down to do any brewing depending on how long this uh, you know this pandemic lasts. I might fire up the pilot kit and we'll have a play around with some new recipes. But I'm definitely not going to be brewing anything on the big kit because, well, we don't know when we're going to be able to sell beer again. So obviously it'd be a silly thing to do. Thank you everyone out there as well for the huge amount of support that's been pouring in over certain platforms. Lots of uh, messages of goodwill in the comments over the past couple of videos. Lots of support on Facebook and online and tons of support recently on Patreon. We've seen a big spike in people pledging uh, money to help us out in these hard times. So thank you very much. That really is going to be probably what saves us because we just don't have an income at the moment and we don't know 
when we're gonna get one. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. But yeah, fear not for me, I'm feeling good in myself, which is fine. A uh, couple of wobbly days, but you know, nothing too bad. My only concern is that I'm gonna end up getting liver disease and becoming obese. Well, I already am obese, but you know what I mean? <laughs> because I'm gonna be stuck at home drinking and eating if I'm not ill. Fingers crossed I don't get ill. Or if I do, it's mild. So if you've got any family, relatives, friends who are sick at the moment, don't forget, look after them. Look after yourself. Anyway, I'm not signing out. I'm gonna go home and do some other stuff. I got a bit sentimental there. Right, let's jump in the car, go home, and uh, let's have a look at these chickens that I'm hatching out. You never know, after the apocalypse, we may all have to kind of live off the land, so you might be interested in this. Right, we're into the SketchUp model that I was talking to you about when we were at work. We are home now, by the way. And what I've been doing is finishing off uh, basically the chicken coop that I wanted to build for the back garden um, for the new eggs that we're hatching out. We've already got some bantam chicks and obviously I don't want to mix them just in case there's any fighting going on. So this is the coop that we've got. This run here is going to be removable and you can pull it away from the whole shebang, you know, move the coop around the garden and then obviously come back and join them back together again wherever we decide to put them. Uh, that is the run. This is the nest box. I've tried to design it so you can kind of see every bit of the uh, carcassing and what have you. Don't want to do that. Right, so there we go. We should be able to hide, there we are, the cladding on the outside. And you can see we've got the framework there, framework for the doors, the base. Everything's designed so it can be basically flat packed and transported in a car. We're just going to put some plywood on the roof of this one and on the actual run itself, at, I think at the moment it's just going to be chicken wire all the way around it. And then we have the nest box which is going to connect onto the back of there. You can see how it's going to go. Plywood base, timber clad sides. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the roof yet. It could be another plywood kind of uh, roof with maybe some roofing felt on there. I don't know. We shall see. We shall see how it goes. But yeah, that's the chicken coop. This should keep me busy for a, well, a couple of days putting this together. And uh, with SketchUp, you have this extension up here at the top called a cut list. And this is what I love about this program. You can actually generate a cut list for all the parts in your model. And you can see the poo tray, poo tray side. And the good thing about this as well is if you just click that button there, you can see it will highlight that part in the model for you. So you can go ahead and name it as you want to. Pretty cool, eh? If, uh, if you're not familiar with it, I suggest you download it. The 2017 version is still free, but uh, yeah, all the others are ones that you have to pay for so far. We've also got this is Dominic's desk that I was telling you about earlier on that we're going to be making for him. Uh, that's what we picked up all the plywood for today earlier on in the video. So again, same sort of thing, just modelled, but because this is mainly made out of ply, when you go to the cut list and you generate it, you get a different type of list because I've modelled this all as 18mm plywood. So you can open a cutting diagram and this is really fantastic. Just tells you what you can get from any offcuts that you have. You can put those into the system or you can just cut everything from full sheet supply and it kind of optimizes it all for you so you don't waste 
any of that plywood just look at that it looks fantastic don't you think so we just have to set up the table saw and zip all these components out and then it's just a case of drilling and assembling after you've painted everything really quite a good program I I'm not brilliant at using it yet I'm, I'm getting the hang of it as you can see but uh, I think if I didn't have the training uh, or self training that is for other programs such as uh, GIMP and Inkscape then this would have been quite a leap for me but uh, I did manage to kind of figure it out on my own and then if we just jump into a folder here I could actually show you the kids bedroom we remodeled the kids bedroom here as well so we've uh, we were able to figure out what is going to fit where and all that kind of stuff which was really pretty cool and then you can kind of set up scenes so you can get the uh, you can get the computer to buzz around from one scene to the next so you can see how much stuff is going to fit and as you can see it's a pretty small bedroom that they're in at the moment which is why I've decided to go forwards and uh, build them these desks individually then of course they can stick all their uh, Lego homework have their own computer on the side and that kind of stuff uh, but yeah really good program there's a lot more you know there's lots of videos out there which are way better than mine at explaining how to use it because I'm not going to even try I wouldn't know where to start at the moment but if you just get stuck in it's quite a good tool for designing things and seeing exactly what will go where getting cutting lists you know figuring out how much timber you need to order it's all really quite smart in that respect so for the desk for instance if we come back to the cut list then uh, it'll actually tell you at the top pretty much what you need like you can input your materials on the materials section it's just running a little bit slow because I've uh, oh, there we go it's kicked me off I'm running the screen record program at the same time so it might be struggling but yeah if it's given up on me you get the drift I'm running Cyberlink screen recorder here as well if anyone's curious this is only the first second or third time I've used this actually but there we go just to give you a bit of an insight on what I've, what I've been doing to keep myself busy while the pub's closed so there's a little insight folks into SketchUp and how I've been designing some of the projects so talking of projects here's another one this is the incubator that we've got on the go and here are the eggs that we've been incubating so I'm going to take this opportunity I've got the phone with the torch on it here we're going to see if we can turn the light off it's still daytime and we're going to go through some of these eggs and we're going to see if we can't find out if we have any chicks in them or not so yeah look at that you see how that's glowing up from the bottom that's a real good indication that we might have a little chick in there yeah look at that there we go if we're lucky we might even see might even see some movement in there but yeah that is oh yeah I can see movement I don't know if it's showing up on the camera but there's definitely some movement in there so that's a white leg horn looks like we've got a little hatchling in there fingers crossed folks and this is pretty much what an un unfertilized egg is going to look like so this is a no go you can see all the little spots I kind of think that's where these little bacteria colonies getting in there but look how dark it is it's the same kind of luminosity all the way around the other one was dark sorry not this being dark so that was a gold laced 
wind debt. That's a no go. Let's have a look how we get on with this blue Moran. It's quite hard to see into the shell until we get round to to this section here, kind of. But I think, let me just re reorientate the phone. I think looking at that, yeah, I can't really make it out on the on the uh, camera. But I do think we've got a little blue moran in there. There is a distinct line across the edge just there. Could just be the yolk floating around. So we'll pop that back in. What's this one? A buff Orpington. Oh look at that. That shows lovely. So I think we're gonna have definitely a buff Orpington in here. Yeah, just look at that. You can really see the luminosity. I'm hoping this camera focuses a little bit. Look at that at the bottom. That big air sac. That's obviously where little fella's getting his oxygen from. And sometimes if you just hold still you can see the the membrane bulge a little bit as there's an activity inside. But yeah, I'm pleased. The Orpington looks like it's going to hatch. And again, looks like we've scored with this one. Another buff Orpington. As you can see, we've got lovely luminosity coming through the shell there. Oh, it's looking promising. I'm just trying to keep in the frame. So yeah, the buff Orpington. Looks like she's gonna hatch. So these are copper Moran eggs. Really difficult to see through. I'm pretty confident though that there's nothing in this one. I can kind of see pretty much everything. I'm not holding out much hope for that egg. And we've got here a well summer. It's a really dark egg. Again, I can't see anything through it. Could be though. Could be. This one, no. This was a light Sussex. Unfortunately, there's nothing in this egg. So we're going to take that out straight away. We've got a black leg on. Oh, come on. You little beauty. I wanted a leg horn to hatch as well. Oh, you can see, I don't know if you can notice, the little flashes there. There's definitely a chick in here. Let's see if we can see that membrane move at all. It's like waiting for a baby to kick, isn't it? As soon as the camera's gone, it'll start. But yeah, we have life in there. So that's promising. Black Leghorn. Yes, I've never had one of those before. And then here we are again onto a Buff Orpington. And again, it looks like we've got life. We've got life in the buff. Oh, look at that. Bottom corner there. You see where it's slightly darker? The chick is in there and is definitely moving. Definitely moving around. It's fascinating stuff, isn't it? Anyway, just a quick update here, folks. I wanted to just show you what we've got. So we're looking maybe at two, four, we've got two, four, six. No, we haven't, because that one wasn't gonna hatch, was it, we don't think. We've got four, eight, maybe seven, maybe six chicks to come out of this. So out of the 12 that I bought, and I did buy them in the winter time, uh, it would appear we are down to five. I'm gonna put these back to bed in the other room. And turn the heater back on. When you put this incubator together, you have to make sure 
that you get the little rod in the right place with, for the automatic egg mover. But there we are folks, a couple of interesting things to keep me and the kids busy during the, uh, the quarantine and the pub shutdown. So yeah, life is still good, you know, it carries on doesn't it? And we're going to have some new life coming into the world very soon by the looks of it with the little chicks. Not exactly sure where the pen's going to go though in the garden, we've already got that one there. I'm sure that we'll make room anyway. Thanks for watching folks, stick around for some more videos. I just need to get uh, get used to doing these daily vlogs again. Because we had a bit of time off at the start of the year and uh, we'll see if we can come up with some really interesting projects. Mm -hmm.